images of Earth taken during space missions and from satellites provide scientific information about the Earth. These are made into highly specialized models for a particular need, such as tracking weather patterns or changes to the atmosphere. While this information greatly increases our understanding of the Earth and its environment, our need to study the Earth can be accomplished with one basic tool. This tool is a globe. A globe is a true three-dimensional model of the Earth in the shape of a ball or sphere. It displays height and width like flat maps, but also gives depth. A globe shows the correct size, shape, and location of the land and water that it represents because it is round. I don't know, the Pacific Ocean was so big. Let's take a closer look. A globe is a type of a map. Globes use a legend to show what the symbols represent. The legend also gives us the scale of that particular globe. The scale tells us how the model compares in size to the real thing it represents, the Earth. The difference in size is expressed as a ratio. Looking at this globe, we can find the legend and see the globe scale right here. It is read as 1 to 41 million 849,600. We usually round this off to 42 million. So we would say this globe has a scale of 1 to 42 million. That's its ratio. The 1 represents the model, in this case the globe. The 42 million represents the real thing, Earth. Again, looking at the legend, we can see that this globe has a diameter of 12 inches. That means if you cut this globe in half and measured it right through the center, it would measure 12 inches, or one foot. Do you know what the diameter of the Earth is? No. Well, if you measure the real Earth right through the center, you would find that it measures 41,849,600 feet, which we would round off to 42 million. So you mean the diameter of the real Earth is 42 million feet? That's right. That means the real Earth is 42 million times larger than the model. Now that you have a basic understanding of scale, let's talk about direction. Globes use the same directions that you're used to using with maps. The cardinal directions are north, south, east, and west. The first letter of each direction is often used instead of the whole word. North is often the only direction shown. We also use intermediate directions. Intermediate directions are those between the cardinal directions, such as northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. With the globe sitting in its proper position, north is upward toward the North Pole, south is downward towards the South Pole, west is to the left, and east to the right. Let's check our knowledge of directions. Can you find Baton Rouge, Louisiana if you are told that it is north of Guatemala City, Guatemala? I think so. Here's Guatemala City, Guatemala and I just go north. I see. There's Baton Rouge. That's how easy it is. But what if you don't know where Guatemala City is in the first place? Great question. Then we'd have to tell you very specifically where to find Guatemala City, Guatemala on the globe. 
To do that, we use an imaginary series of lines that make up a grid system. One set run north and south and are called lines of longitude. The other set run east and west and are called lines of latitude. Lines of latitude are also referred to as parallels of latitude. Since they are evenly spaced, about 69 miles apart, exactly parallel to each other. Around the middle of the Earth is a line called the equator. The half of the globe above the equator to the North Pole is called the Northern Hemisphere. The lower half of the globe below the equator to the South Pole is called the Southern Hemisphere. The word hemisphere means half of a globe or sphere. The lines of latitude are shown on this globe at every 15 degrees. This is the symbol for degree. Notice that this 15 degree marking has an N after it. That means that it is 15 degrees in the northern hemisphere. If you went south, the 15 degree line in the southern hemisphere is the same distance from the equator but in the southern direction. You would say your latitude is 15 degrees south. Each degree can be further broken down into minutes. There are 60 minutes in one degree. This is the symbol for minutes. Minutes can be broken down into even smaller measurements known as seconds. There are 60 seconds in one minute. This is the symbol for seconds. Let's put it all together. 60 seconds equal one minute. 60 minutes equal one degree. Let's move on to the lines of longitude. The lines of longitude run north and south around the globe, meeting at the north and south poles. Unlike the lines of latitude you've learned about, the lines of longitude are not evenly spaced apart. At the poles, they come together, and at the equator, they bulge apart. Lines of longitude, or meridian as they are also known, begin at zero on the prime meridian. The prime meridian is also known as the Greenwich meridian as it runs through the original site of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. This globe shows them at 15 degree intervals as they intersect the equator, but at the poles they are only labeled every 30 degrees since they are so close together. Lines of longitude are measured in the same way the lines of latitude are, with degrees, minutes, and seconds, all keeping their same meaning and symbols. Just like the zero line of latitude, the equator, divides the Earth into the northern and southern hemispheres, the zero line of longitude, or line of meridian, divides the Earth into the eastern and western hemispheres. Just as you specified northern and southern hemisphere with latitude, you will now give east or west to locate the correct lines of longitude. You've seen the prime meridian at zero degrees, but as it circles the Earth and comes to the other side, it is now located at 180 degrees on what is known as the International Dateline. Before we move ahead with the International Dateline, Let's go back to the question about locating Guatemala City, Guatemala. Could you find Guatemala City now if you were told it was located at 15 degrees north and 90 degrees west? I think so. Well, here's 15 degrees north and here's 90 degrees west. There it is. That's it exactly. Nicely done. You'd find Baton Rouge, Louisiana exactly the same way. It is located approximately 
30 degrees north and 90 degrees west. Globes also teach us about the Earth's rotation. The Earth makes one full rotation every 24 hours. At noon in California, the sun is high overhead. But what is it like in India on the other side of the Earth? Is it noon there also, but night instead of day? No, because over 100 years ago, an international commission created 24 international time zones. Each zone is approximately 15 degrees apart. Each of these time zones is named. New York is in the Eastern Time Zone, Chicago in the Central Time Zone, Denver in the Mountain Time Zone, Los Angeles in the Pacific Time Zone, Anchorage is in the Alaska Time Zone, and Honolulu is in the Hawaii Time Zone. What this means is that while it's lunchtime in New York, 15 degrees to the west, Chicago kids are still in class at 11 a.m. 15 degrees further to the west, Denver kids are at recess at 10 a.m. And another 15 degrees west are Los Angeles students just starting their day when the bell rings at 9 a.m. If you kept going to the west another 15 degrees, you would find students in Anchorage hurrying to catch the bus at 8 a.m. And for 15 degrees more to the west are those in Honolulu just reaching for their alarm clock at 7 a.m. Now everyone was doing these things at exactly the same time, but because of the international time zones, our clocks and the position of the sun seem to make more sense together. From Hawaii, if we went just another 15 degrees west, we would find ourselves at the international dateline. It is the other half of the prime meridian and is at 180 degrees longitude. When we crossed the international dateline going west, you moved to the next day. So if you had been observing all these people on Tuesday, when you arrived at the dateline and crossed it, it would be Wednesday instead. Now when you cross back over the dateline, moving towards the east, you would be back at Tuesday. What else does a globe show us? There are three distinct weather regions on Earth. The first is called the tropics. It covers the area from 23 degrees, 27 minutes northern latitude, called the Tropic of Cancer, to 23 degrees, 27 minutes southern latitude, called the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Cancer is the northernmost latitude where the sun can shine directly overhead. The Tropic of Capricorn is the southernmost latitude where the sun can shine directly overhead. The tropics are known for their warm, sunny climate year-round. The coldest areas are the polar regions. The northern polar region reaches from the North Pole down to the 66 degree, 30 minute northern latitude, which is called the Arctic Circle. The southern polar region reaches from the South Pole up to the 66 degree, 30 minute southern latitude, known as the Antarctic Circle. The areas between the polar regions and the tropics are called the temperate regions as the temperatures are more mild or temperate. Four distinct seasons can be observed in the temperate regions. Globes show us different things depending on the purpose of the globe. Some globes show boundaries, ocean currents, or elevation. This globe details historical information on many of the famous explorations by water. This globe shows what the Earth looks like using a special photographic technology. It shows us the Earth as seen from space on a cloudless day. A globe is a true three-dimensional model of the Earth. Different types of globes display different information depending on their purpose. 
The legend details the symbols used on the globe as well as its scale, which is stated as a ratio. To pinpoint specific locations, a grid system is used. Both lines of latitude and of longitude are measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. The zero degree line of latitude, called the equator, divides the Earth into the northern and southern hemispheres. The zero degree line of longitude divides the Earth into the eastern and western hemispheres. 24 time zones have been established internationally to help time be relevant as we interact with others around the world. The cardinal directions are north, south, east, and west and are incorporated into the lines of latitude and longitude when giving location, such as 30 degrees north and 90 degrees west for Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A globe is a very accurate source of information for studying the Earth.